Hey guys, what's up? What's going on on a Sunday? Wait a minute. I have like, I'm so digging this dragonfly necklace that I got at York Beach in Maine. It's a mood necklace. Isn't that the coolest thing? It is a mood necklace. And the blue means I'm completely calm and relaxed. That's supposed to be like super chill color is blue. <laughs> so uh, of course the hubby and kids are out swimming at my folks house. So is that why I'm chill? I don't know. And no, I'm just kidding. Usually when they're around, I actually have stayed pretty blue. So I'm like, hmm, you know, I guess I'm, I'm doing all right then. No mom crazies this week, right? So how y'all doing? How y'all doing? It's been a little bit since I've done a live stream. I don't think I only did like two last week. And you know, we've been, um, kind of traveling the past week traveling in the sense of like just doing going to the beach a lot we've been to the amusement park we've been to like a ton of restaurants people who see me on Facebook must be like do you ever eat at home well actually we do but this is pretty much kind of like the last week before we have to buckle down for school so we've kind of been going out and about and doing stuff and I find that I often can't get live streams going when I'm out and about so I have to figure out how some people manage to do that maybe it's having your phone as a hot spot I don't know but I'll figure it out. It's all good. It's okay. So today I'm all made up. So no marketing and makeup as far as makeup. I'm, all, I'm good. So I was doing a whole bunch of videos. I have um, a bunch of beauty bashes starting tomorrow. So I love doing beauty bashes for my peeps. Um, what a fun way to see all the great products with this makeup. So this was um, kind of a culmination of a bunch of videos that I did. So it was fun. Anyone could do this. Like, I mean, like, like seriously, look at me now. <laughs> I just, you know, putting on makeup. Actually, I need more lipstick again a little bit. I love this lipstick, so I'm just going to put a little more on. And awesome. So I wanted to talk today about emails because I had somebody ask me in a private message. She wanted to know she's promoting her business using email marketing, which is awesome. It's a great way to communicate with all of your customers, all of your potential customers at one time. If you know what an autoresponder is, I've talked about this before, um, where you can get a database that holds all of your prospects and you can split them up into lists. Well, these are prospects, these are customers, these are your team members, whatever it is, and you can send out a mass email to them all at once as opposed to individual ones, which can really is a great way to compress time when you're doing business, especially if you're like me, have kids and you need to communicate things um, in bulk like that. It's great. And you can set it to email people in the future. So if I have to send out one in the morning and then one to remind people at night that we're having a webinar or a meeting or a training, I can do that really easily. It's, it's sweet. But here's the thing. Here's the catch. You want people to actually open your emails, right? You want them to open. And this is what my, my friend had asked. She said, well, then people, my open rate is really low. And first of all, I just want to make a side note that not always does the open rate matter because your open rate could be, I mean, say, it depends on how you look at it, right? Somebody could have a list of 10 people on their email list, subscriber list, and have a 50% open rate, which means five people are opening in it. And it could be like their mom and their sister and their brother and their friends. So, or somebody could have a list of like 5,000 people and have a 5% open rate, which is actually a lot more people. And this is a wider audience. So these might be people who want to buy or purchase your product or service, right? So it's not always the open rate that matters so much. It's what the clicks, like are people doing what you want them to do once they're opening the email? First of all, are they totally reading it? And second, are they doing what you ask them to do? So here's how you can kind of do that. Here, so you want to start with getting people to really just open them, right? That's the beginning. Are they opening them or not? So the first, the most important thing, how to write emails that people won't go, ew, delete, is your subject line. Like that is just like critical, that's platinum, whatever, because if you don't have a good subject line, you could have the most professional, hot, smoking hot copy inside the email. You just like poured your heart out and you wrote the best email ever and people, your subject line sucks and people just delete it and you're like, ah, like what? So that's the attention grabber. That's what people are gonna open. And wanna hear something hilarious? The best, <laughs> the best open rate that I had one time for my email was when I actually forgot to put a subject in. And I was like, Hey, Ashley, how are you? Um, so it was like, it was a blank subject line. It said like nothing, 
no subject. And people actually, the, I had the highest open rate ever. So it's funny, you never know what's going to catch people's attention. So you want to really think about, okay, this is back to target market, back to customer research, back to what, who are you talking to? What are their problems? What's their pain? How are you solving them? Okay, or how are you pointing them in the direction of something that's going to solve that? And what are the questions they're asking? So the, the headline might be something to, can be totally crazy, like, I don't know, he told me I suck. <laughs> like something, sometimes in, like odd, it has to relate to the body of the email, it has to be congruent. But it, you could start out and write copy on the inside and start out with a subject header that just catches attention and somehow relates, but it's maybe not necessarily about your product. Because if you put something like big sale, like think about things that you delete, right? If there's a headline that says on sale now or, this, or buy one, get one free, or um, here's the latest, I don't know, you know what I'm saying. There are certain kinds of emails that you just look at the subject line, you're like, see you later, right? Or it just says something kind of gross, like for, um, I don't know, I won't even go there, but there are certain subject lines that you know it's spam, you know it's like something crappy and you just delete it. Or it's boring, it doesn't even like catch your attention at all. Like, I don't know, the 23 ways to be most productive on Mondays, like, ha, you know. So here's what you wanna do, and this is my, you might wanna, let's reverse engineer this a little bit. So if you know who you're talking to, you wanna make a mixture of making copy the inside content that's relevant to the people you're talking to and make it personal, authentic, and um, so that your personality shines through. So it's like they're talking to you. So the first thing you want to do is create your emails right in like you're talking to one person. So like in a video, if I, it's, it's really most powerful when that person seems like they're reaching out and talking to you, right? They're grabbing you and they're pulling you towards them. and they're get, delivering this message that's just for you, that you were meant to hear. They're looking at you, they're making eye contact with the camera, they're using words like I, you, as if you're having a personal conversation, right? And you remember that feeling like, um, like when you were little, when you were young, not little, but when you were a teenager, if you're a girl, like girls, when you used to go to like a concert, you went to like Duran Duran, haha, -ha, and you're like, you swore that Simon Le Bon was like singing to you. He's like looking at you and like singing to you. It's that, that kind of intimate feel that comes with speaking or doing video, looking and like you're talking to only one, as opposed to say, starting an email saying, hey, everybody, because then that person's like, oh, they're emailing like everybody. I'm not finding out anything new. Like, they, they don't care about me, right? If you start the email like that, like, what's up, guys? They're just like, ugh. You know, so make it, make it personal. Sometimes I start mine with something like, hey, what are you doing? Like, I mean, like, hey, how are you? It's been a while since I talked to you. What's up? <laughs> like, I mean, I do. And those of you on my email list know this. Um, or I'll say, oh my gosh, I just had the weirdest day. Like something that's just like I'm talking to a friend. Talk like you're talking to your friend like you would talk, okay? And the second thing is, like I said, write in the first person. Use the word I. Use the word you. Uh, don't talk about yourself in the third person like, hey, Jen Rapinion had a great day today. Want to hear about Jen's latest sale? <laughs> like, ew. Kelly, hey, what's up? Nikki, what's up? Uh, hi, hon. Um, so to make sure, here's what you want to do too. So after you finish this, to make sure it sounds like you, go back and read it to yourself. Read it out loud. And then you can you can find out where the weirdness is, if you have any awkwardness, or if it sounds like, because it should read like it's talking. Because people are going to, you know how you're reading something, but you're kind of saying it in your head? It's almost like you're reading it, you're not saying it aloud, but it goes like a conversation, it processes like a conversation. If there's weirdness in the sentences or if it's choppy or if the language is weird and it doesn't flow, your brain kind of picks up on it even if you don't realize it consciously, if anyone knows what I'm talking about. So read it aloud. Make sure it sounds like a conversation and it's not weird. Then you can go back and tweak the little um, awkward places. And guess what? Now don't tell your English teacher from eighth grade, I'm not gonna tell mine, but in email copy, Grammar doesn't always matter. So spelling errors, not so much of a big deal. Now I'm not saying you wanna go sloppy and just write in all like slang words and just misspell everything, kinda of like you rushed through it and didn't bother to like check, but a little error here and there, no one's gonna care. Oh, I love that you are so confident. Oh, thank you, Nikki, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, 
Hey girl, we all, all women, we all have our power, confident women inside of us. Just gotta let that, let that woman out. Um, so we all, we all make errors, we all make mistakes, and it's good for people to see that your email's not perfect. Sometimes there's an error here and there, no big deal. And usually the mind works funny, it'll just gloss right over it and they'll know what you meant, right? You've seen those posts on Facebook where things are like written backwards and your mind just kind of goes through it anyway. So that's the way it is sometimes with spelling errors. And again, just let me, let me just say, not sloppy, just, you know, just here and there, no big deal. Don't get upset if you reread it later and you go, oh my God, I spelled something wrong. Don't worry, it's good. Um, and you want to make sure it's not too corporate sounding. Right? That's not, because usually, especially if you're in a home business, you probably are here because you're trying to escape corporate America. You don't want to go back to it. You don't want to stay with it. So don't make yourself sound like you and your team are this professional team. You're the manager. You're the CEO, which you are. But you know what I mean. We're the CEO of an anti-professional organization. Doesn't mean you're not professional. We, the, like network marketing is a profession. We have skills and we've educated ourselves and we, you know, we have integrity in class, you know, in grace, but we're not, we don't have that same feel to the way we interact and the way we talk and the way we present ourselves. It's so much more intimate and personal and we're not afraid to be ourselves. I mean, I remember being in corporate America for years and I was never, I was hardly ever completely myself. Anyone like, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I it wasn't, it wasn't encouraged for us to be ourselves. I wouldn't say, I mean, I remember once being in a meeting and I'm not kidding you guys, I was in a staff meeting and our sales reps at that time, even our manager were like, they're really, they were funny, these funny guys and they would get going in these sales meetings and they would yuck it up and tell jokes and I was laughing and I actually had the manager pull me aside later in a meeting and say, that I was laughing too much during the meeting and I seemed a little too happy. Was I really taking things seriously? And I was just like, are you freaking kidding me? It was because you were funny and it was a great meeting. And in fact, when I'm happy, I pay more attention, uh, ass. Oh my gosh, excuse me, I'm getting all fired up. I shouldn't call people ass, pardon me. But you know what I mean? That's what I felt like saying, I didn't say that. But you know what I'm saying? Like that, that kind of environment is not what we do here. Like that's not what we do. People are allowed to be themselves. And when you write an email, you wanna be yourself. So go ahead and not be, have a professional email. And besides, they can be quite boring. I mean, if you remember like memos from you know, your job or your company. <sighs> so just be yourself. It's not professional. It's just individual. And let's not forget this. This is the last piece when you're writing an email. Please put in that call to action. Whatever you want people to do, people need to really know what you're asking them to do next. So whether it's you want them to click on a link to go to a training, if you are looking for them to go look at your um, presenter or distributor website and purchase something, if you want them to, I don't know, join your Facebook group or come to your next live stream, read your blog, put a call to action, whether it's through words or through a link, and that will ensure that you get those clicks. Um, so your autoresponder will tell you that you got so many clicks so that people are actually doing what you're asking them to do. So that's it. That's kind of the key to writing the emails that people aren't going to delete. Start with that subject line. That usually is the key right there. But again, it goes back to really knowing who you're talking to, knowing what their issues are and how you can help them out and really making that clear, giving them content that's valuable to them and relevant. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm out of here. I see. Hi, baby. I see my husband's on here probably asking, are you done yet and coming down to the pool? So I should probably get going now. But I wanted to do one of these. Um, let's see. Speaking of call to action, anything that I can tell you. If you're not subscribed to my live streams, please click the blue button after this is done. Subscribe. And that will let you know in your notifications when I'm coming on. For um, those of you who have asked me about doing the Get Ready and Glow Beauty Bashes where I do kind of like a, an online makeup class for you and your friends and whoever, just send me a message, a private message and let me know or you can comment below if you're comfortable with that too. Um, yeah, and oh, we have a brand new serum coming out, my unique business. We have um, an instant firming, instant lifting serum that's coming out in the next couple of weeks. I'm gonna get my hands on that very soon. So if you want a sample of that, I'm more than happy to send you a sample. Uh, but first you need to head on over to my VIP room in order to get that. So leave a comment below if you wanna be in my VIP room and I will add you. 
All right. And as always, my newsletter, rockyourbizwithjen.com. That's where I send marketing information, tips and tricks, and my blog post. You can get an email with my latest blog post there. All right. I will see you guys tomorrow. Have an amazing Sunday. Um, make sure you're getting lots of rest and rejuvenating because, you know, it's going to be a big week coming up. Mondays are it. Motivation Monday tomorrow. Talk to you guys soon.